Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today, and welcome to this One Market Data webinar. Today, we'll review One Market Data's managed data and analytics platform known as the OneTick Cloud. We'll discuss industry trends and how our product strategy has evolved to meet those trends. Also, we'll have a conversation with a customer case study describing how their business was improved by using OneTick Cloud. And we'll follow that up with a short product demonstration and end the session with a Q&A where you'll have a chance to answer questions. Joining me today are two other presenters, my colleague Jeff Banker. Jeff runs our corporate strategy for global market content. Also joining us, joining us is Ben Locke, a quantitative analyst who has worked with numerous firms where he's leveraged OneTick Cloud and OneTick Analytics. We've asked Ben to share his experience through a customer case study. And I am Louis Lovis. And I'm responsible for the solution strategy here at One Market Data. Now, to start this off, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Jeff Banker. Great. Thank you, Louis. Uh, One Market Data has been servicing the needs of the most sophisticated capital markets participants for nearly 10 years. We're today going to share with you the trends that we have been observing in our customer and prospect base over the past 12 months. The three trends that we're going to share with you today uh, in our capital markets segment are as follows. Number one, there's an increasing focus on reducing expenses related to market data infrastructure, maintenance, and QA. Second, the R&D need to rapidly test alpha strategies in new markets. And third, regulations such as best X and trade surveillance are driving organizational priorities. Uh, given these trends, which we, believe, which we believe are transformative and sustaining, we've aligned and expanded our product and corporate strategy to meet the needs associated with these trends as follows. First, as the slide shows, we've expanded our capabilities. One to Cloud now integrates over 100 content or exchange services, exchange time series services, I should say, reference data, corporate actions, with our one tick analytics and visual dashboards. This enables market participants to rapidly access high-quality, time-aligned data sets without the overhead associated with data collection. Second, we've developed application utilities. Surveillance, backtesting, and transaction cost analysis are just a few of them, which offer clients a highly cost-effective turnkey subscription service. And finally, cost-effective access. Our pricing and service model has an efficient cost structure for access to asset classes, simple subsets, and specific exchanges. While we recognize that there are many cloud-based content solutions available in the market, we believe our capabilities offer a unique, integrated, cost-effective solution, unrivaled in the market through the combination of our market tested and accepted one-tick software, integrated with high-quality and precision market data, and supported by our global reference data. The key value drivers to the marketplace are, number one, time-aligned deep tick-by-tick deep -tick time series data. Second, a library of financial data analytics serviced by our one-tick software. And finally, query integration with R and Python um, languages that allow for easy access to the platform. So now I want to introduce the audience to Ben Locke, a quant-trained ALGO research and development expert who has been focused on ALGO R&D for the past several years. Ben will explain the challenges he has encountered in his role, particularly on collecting, storing, and analyzing high-frequency time series data. Ben will also provide insight into how one to cloud has helped him become more efficient and capable in his role. Welcome, Ben. Perhaps you could start by providing the audience with a glimpse into the role of ALGO research and development. Sure, Jeff. Um, so I, I work on the uh, work on the cell side. I've been developing algos for um, a couple of years now, uh, several brokerages. What I what I work in is execution, right? So I'm I'm actually not looking for alpha. What I'm looking for is best X for our clients. Um, we have uh, I've worked for clients that have very very niche execution needs, such as um, extremely low liquidity um, instruments. Um, legal issues, like it must be done, must not be done, um, and so forth. Uh, and, and, you know, to tune and optimize those strategies, I've, I've leveraged one tick a great deal. So um, when we first, when I, when I first started uh, building algos, it became obvious we needed market data. And at the broker I had, we, we, we had a, you know, a subset of market data that we attached to all of our orders. Um, but to really make to really make reliable products that generalize well, you need access to the entire market. So 
then that, that's also another thing of working at a broker, right? You, you don't know what symbols you're going to have tomorrow, right? You're not developing a strategy for biotech or, or whatever. You need, you need a strategy that generalizes to whatever symbol is going to hit your system. Um, so that, that was the first thing that, was, that, that really made one tick stick out and that, that you can make market-wide queries, right? I can get the average spread of an entire market right, in a single query. That, that is extremely valuable compared to um, other market data providers where you, you, have to, you, you need to know the symbol first, right? Step one, what is your symbol? Step two, I can get everything. Well, with one tick, you, you can go backwards, which is, which is extremely valuable when you're here on the sell side. Um, so that, that was the first major thing. The next major thing is just the sheer amount of data, right? There, there were really three parts to, to, to analyzing data and, and using it to build execution strategies. That is first gathering it from the data feeds, right? Each exchange has their own proprietary feeds. You've got um, several market-wide feeds, UTDF, CTS, et cetera. Um, so, so you have to write code to parse these feeds, and you have to pay the, the fees to uh, connect up to them. Um, but one tick sort of puts it all in one place and, and does that first. So you, you don't have to write code just to get to the data. Um, so that's, that's extremely valuable. Uh, the next part is just the sheer storage size, right? This, so one tick has a database in which the market data already resides. If we were to do this ourselves, we would have to build the database. So we need multiple people to that are you know, well-trained in building and optimizing databases. Um, and that's, that, that's a huge effort in and of itself. And, and you know, that's like one tick, is, it's already there. Like you can just write queries to something that's already built. Um, and lastly, there's the actual querying of the database, right? Um, you can build, say, a massive Postgres database, but without a really powerful query language like one tick has, it, it's really difficult to analyze things market-wide, especially if you need to update parameters overnight. Um, so that's, those are the, the things that attracted me to one tick and what made me ultimately strike on them. Great. Thank you, Ben, for that insight. Maybe um, specifically around the issue of, of reference data and mm -hmm. um, time stamping, if you can give some insight into some of the issues you've had or uh, somebody in your role might have with um, data sets in general and how one to cloud was able to overcome them. Sure. So as I stated before, um, a lot of my clients deal with very low liquidity or esoteric instruments. And it so happens that the QCIP, the symbol, the primary exchange, these things change on a regular basis. So when you're looking at, say, a year's worth of data, you may have one or two symbol changes in the middle. Um, one tick basically maps your chain of symbols, right? So you can analyze a single security um, as it's evolved over time, right? Like the price action won't necessarily change just because of a symbol change, especially if it's an administrative change, like the instrument moved from NYSE to NASDAQ. Um, that's, if you don't have that, as many market data providers don't, you immediately must build a historical security master if you want market-wide uh, coverage, which, you know, as, as a broker, like I said, we, we absolutely need. Um, so that was, the, that's, that's hugely attractive. Um, and, and the reference data itself, uh, everything gets mapped to primary exchange, which, which if you've been working on the, uh, on the execution side, you, you know that's, that's really, really important. Thanks, Ben, for that insight. And perhaps um, finally, what made the one to cloud fee structure attractive to the alternatives that you had in the marketplace? Sure. So one tick is it is one fee, right? Just from an administrative standpoint, but it also allows you to sort of like I want a scope of securities, right? I'm interested in the U.S. equity market, so I don't have to buy the entire world, or I don't have to buy, you know, Brazil as well, right? So one, you can section it off by markets, and two, you've got consolidated feeds in those markets. 
So, um, for instance, in, in, in the particular uh, contract we have with OneTick, we have trades, top of book, and depth of book from multiple exchanges, right? If, if, if OneTick was priced differently and we had to pay, say, the, the fees for each one of those exchanges, that would be extremely expensive, uh, especially those depth of book fees. Great, Ben. Uh, thanks for sharing your views uh, today and helping our audience better understand the challenges associated with algorithm research, research and development. Uh, while Ben has primarily been focused on U.S. markets, uh, one to cloud offers coverage for all liquid global cash and derivative markets. Uh, we collect our data from a variety of methods and sources to ensure that we have the most complete and accurate set of data available in the market. Our services platform offers many options. Uh, Louis Lovis will now demonstrate our capabilities, including the solution that Ben referenced during our discussion. Louis? Hey, Jeff. Thank you. Um, we should be on a slide just looking at our cloud architecture. And I'm just going to talk about this for a little bit, and then I'm going to jump into a, uh, a few demos um, to talk about um, one to cloud and how you can use the product. Quantic Cloud includes a lot of analytical tools for creating custom data sets. That includes user selectable time periods, market centers, and analytics, as Ben was just describing. The architecture includes two query builders, a web application, and a desktop tool for constructing and accessing your query results. The web app is a self-service query tool where you build your own query definitions to extract or stream data on demand. The Desktop Query Builder offers greater sophistication for more customized, derived analytics. No matter which query tool you use, OneTick includes APIs in a variety of languages to run queries and stream the results from our cloud servers. Results can be TCA benchmarks, market replay for backtesting. Results can be more research-oriented for market structure analysis. This could be ETF spread analytics across the LSE, or other European equity, or U.S. or Canadian equity markets. I'll show you a few real-world examples of this, um, and I'll do that right now. So what I'm actually going to do is show you some extracted content um, in a variety of different markets and different geographies that kind of focus on the types of things that we've been asked, So, including some of the ones that Ben asked us about initially when we first started talking to him. Um, so let me jump into that by sharing my screen. So the first one I'm going to look at is exactly that, the idea of spread analytics. Now this is a, a, what I'm going to do is show query results, right, and, and what, how we can extract content. And I just took the content which you can get in either CSV format or what's known as a JSON object, which is a, sort of an industry standard self-describing structure. And JSON is much more amenable to program uh, consuming. So if you, you know, if you want to consume this in R or Python or MATLAB or Java or C Sharp, any of those languages that we support, the JSON object is probably the way to go. Now, no matter how you build a query, you can get that data delivered to you in either CSV or uh, JSON. Just so happens for this set of uh, example data sets, I've just you know, done the instruction as CSV and put them in Excel just because it's easier to see that than looking at uh, just a comma-separated list. So, again, this is looking at uh, roughly four days, June 19th through June 22nd, of daily results on um, ETFs out of the, out of the European markets. Um, and this happens to be the across um, about six different markets, both on you know, the LSC and about six of them across the continent as well. And the particular thing that's kind of interesting here was the fact that you can actually query this data by market maker. So this is actually computing averages uh, on the spread and the sizes, the bid-ask size, and then by exchange and also by market maker. So if I just grab one of those, so that one spider symbol, UKBB, um, and the sources, that's actually the market maker and then the average spread. So I just grabbed that for those three days, the 19th through the 22nd. Um, you know, if there's anything you can do with this, right, so I just simply grab that and right, you can clearly see that the point here is that you can do this kind of analysis very broadly, get uh, across market, across days 
or you know tick by tick or any kind of bar interval if you so uh, desire and then you can see results so you can see these I think there are four market makers on the LSE and then how they repeat right so anon is anonymous so that's really the anonymous so you can see that how these average spreads vary by market maker on that particular symbol so it was just kind of an interesting example I thought I'd show you there um, let me show you another one um, in addition to actual data you can do symbol queries right uh, in that list of markets that Jeff talked about we can essentially pull um, tick by tick trades quotes book depth um, you can we support a full descriptive data as well and that's exactly what you're seeing here um, for this is against um, the CME group NYMEX so I just simply queried that NYMEX exchange history and said give me all the tickers right so you can see we're here just on a particular day I got all the contract symbols right the first thing it's showing there is crude oil right? you can see other use other uh, contracts by name as well and the fact that what do we have on that particular day between trades, quotes, and order books? Um, and <clears throat> again, this idea of doing a symbol extraction, again, whether that, that's against a futures market or an equity market, is the fact that you can um, pull that data and get new listings, right? If there's a newly listed uh, instrument on an equity market or a new contract that comes online, um, you can easily get that list in because we maintain them every day, so you could actually build this query and schedule it to run every day. Um, likewise, if you're managing your own symbol list, whether that symbol is related to the constituents of an index, an ETF, or basket, you can upload that into um, the one tick cloud and then you know do a regular schedule upload so that you can then use that list of symbols to query data as well. So that's just one example showing um, a bit of data query based uh, just to get the symbol list. Here's another one. This one's actually um, a little more focused at a slightly different use case. Um, in this case, you can imagine here I'm looking at these e-mini contracts. Um, what is that? March and June. Um, this is actually showing you how in a tick by tick, you can see on the current day here, let's look at these two contracts tick by tick. All right, there's the, the March contract. There's the June contract, tick by tick prices. And the use case around this was actually just simply to feed this input to um, uh, an algo for back testing. So it's looking at the current day and a one day look back. Right on the one day look back, we're essentially looking at the high and low on each of those legs. Right, so that's what you see here. So this is so you can, that's why the number is the same. Essentially, it scanned the day. Right, the day ended here at 4 in this particular case, the trading interval. 4 p.m. Um, take the high and the low, and obviously the range of them, and effectively the spread on the high and the low, on both legs. And essentially that's a tick that an algo can, can consume. And whether that's a one-day look back or a 10-day or one-month look back is really a function of how that query was designed. It, the number of days was dumped just a parameter. But ideally what this is showing is that you can look at current day prices compare it to some historical averages um, on a tick-by-tick -tick basis, right? So that's really what the intent here is for backtesting. And I'll show a more well-defined use case around that as well. Let me show another one. I actually did a couple of um, um, what I will call liquidity analysis uh, uh, queries that I used in a presentation I was uh, working on relative to backtesting. Um, this is actually a breakdown of the consolidated feed, the you know the CTA and UTP, the SIP in the U.S., um, where we can see um, liquidity. In this case, it's across the symbols of the Nasdaq 100 on a particular month, right? So we're essentially looking at an aggregate by market on uh, the bid side and the ask side, um, and then a breakdown based in percentages here. So that's what you see in these little pie charts. So that just simply pulled into Excel and, and charted kind of easily. And you can see who has the lion's share. Kind of obvious, right? NASDAQ is going to have the lion's share of the liquidity on um, for the symbols in the NASDAQ 100. And then just a little bit more here, looking at the, the average bid-ask spread and who has 
the, the widest or narrowest as well. Right, so that's just some interesting results I was using that were essentially feeding input to, uh, in this case it was, uh, again, uh, related to back testing. Uh, in that same note, I did another one here. Um, and this one is actually looking at um, uh, traded volumes, you know, essentially the total traded volume, total number of trades and a dollar volume on a per exchange basis. Again, this is across, you know, the individual um, major markets in the U.S. And what percentage, you know, this is, um, I did this in two cases, right? You can see here, again, across the NASDAQ 100, a month-long analysis. And um, you can see, you know, between NASDAQ and reported trades and FINRA or dark trades, you can see how that breakdown is here. Um, those are obviously taking a lion's share with dark trades being the most the highest in that month. That's pretty normal, I think, nowadays. There's notice this little news headline I stuck in here. This happens to be something I did as a comparison to say on that particular day, you know, uh, it was the largest trading volume in quite a long time. I think that was in, in four years' time. This was back in August of 2000. 15. I'm sure most of you remember that. So I did the same exact query just for that week, right? So just simply looking at what is a typical average in a typical month, and I just essentially said, okay, now I want to do the week where we hit those high volumes just to see what the difference is. It isn't significantly different in terms of market volume and the proportion or percentage of the breakdown of market volume, but if you look at volatility, I just looked at QQQ on volatility, again, comparing that month interval to that one week, right? Again, we're August 25th. This is probably smoothed out a little bit if I did, because I did a week as opposed to just that one day, the day after. But you can see the difference in volatility as reported um, on that particular exchange there. Again, there's no dark, dark in here. It's just traded volume or liquidity, actually. So it's pretty interesting to see that one. That's another kind of query. You can essentially query, get this data set, and I happen to pull it into Excel. You can easily pull it into R and do analysis, more detailed analysis. You can do that analysis in one take, and I simply charted them here in Excel. Um, one last example I want to show here in terms of content was a specific case that Ben asked us if we could support. If you look at this news headline, this was back in October of last year. Um, where T-Mobile decides to switch their primary listing exchange um, from NYSE to NASDAQ. Um, and, of course, the question related to that is, can we maintain that continuity of that uh, instrument as it switches from one exchange to the other? And so you can see here I did that, and I just highlighted in different colors when it switched from. This is, again, reported on the SIP. That's why you see. SIAC here, that's the CTA feed, and then the, when it switched from kind of that tan color to a pink color, that's the day they switched, right? So, and you can see the, I did this query based on QSIP. You can see that it's showing that QSIP number is maintained, but then the symbol on this preferred stock, what it was, um, its ticker on uh, NYSE versus its ticker on NASDAQ. And you see the primary listing uh, mnemonic, right, USX and NYS for New York Stock Exchange, and then there's NMS for NASDAQ. And of course, these are the reporting exchanges as well. Again, this is coming from the consolidated feeds. The first top part is from the CTA. The bottom part is from the UTP. But all in all, it's on the set. So again, this was a specific case Ben was interested in looking across, you know, um, changes in the market in terms of um, our ability to support those kind of changes, events, right, corporate action events, and, and maintain that continuity so that we, we can handle that. We have both the infrastructure, the reference data, and the technology as part of our analytics set to be able to do this to essentially so it does not become an exercise left to the user. This is sort of built-in functionality within one tick and one tick cloud. So looking at all these data sets, again, I looked at uh, ETF spreads. I looked at um, pairs of contracts, like front month and back month on E-minis. Um, 
I looked at a couple of liquidity analysis pieces, and those liquidity analysis on the, the markets, U.S. equity markets, they're all input to something, right? And essentially, two particular cases I want to highlight is they can be input to um, cost analysis. So this is actually looking at benchmark prices, because you can use our data. We actually have pre-computed benchmarks on most equity markets. Um, and this is a case where we're actually looking at, you know, a, a, this is some order flow data. It actually happens to be order flow data that we mocked up. Um, so we didn't want to reveal any particular customer uh, order data, but it, effectively it's showing that. So you can just simply look across the top here, a bunch of traded um, symbols. You know, essentially this is the order flow summary, right? looking at the total fill quantity. And then it's comparing the, that particular order and it fills an aggregate against the market. Right, essentially against an open price and rival, uh, computed VWAP and, and uh, uh, three different levels of participation, PWP at 10, 20, and 30. Um, so this is a typical use case. This is all, this the analytics you're seeing here, just looking at these column headings, was all implemented and done in one tick. Again, in this case, we're combining market data with a customer's own order flow data. Right? And we can consume that order flow data as fix fixed drop copies in real time. We can extract it from well-known EMS systems um, and be able to do this kind of in-depth analysis. Even down here, if you look at this line, this timeline chart actually selected a particular order by its order ID. You can see all the little bubbles there all represent the fills. Right? I can even grab that and, and kind of zoom in a little. And the red and the blue are the bid and the ask. Right? So you can see and keep drilling in and see essentially the visual representation of the spread, you know, where that particular order hit um, relative to the spread and time in the market. Um, and this is just sort of visual clues, essentially for a particular order, how it was, you know, how it was routed to different venues. So that's one case, you know, how you can take this data, use it in a TCA, best execution, execution quality kind of model. Another one is essentially looking at back testing. So this is sort of a case where I was looking at the data um, of those two spread likes, right, on that ETF, I'm sorry, on that um, uh, crude oil futures contract, so front month and the back month. So in this particular case, you know, essentially your ability to look at one and, and essentially replay market history, capture that, um, through backtesting infrastructure, through simulated order flow, uh, to a simulation engine, and produce essentially all P&L related statistics. And then in the, with this tool, you can actually not only see that sort of summary view, but then chart it relative to the market. Right? So these are all the fills of the simulated order flow and backtesting, and overlaid on the market. This happens to just be trade prices that are shown. That's the end of the demonstration use cases, and that concludes this webinar. I hope you found this review of OneTick Cloud informative and interesting. Just a quick recap. OneTick Cloud is a securely hosted service providing managed data and analytics across global equities and futures markets. It offers level one, level two, and end of day prices, and corporate action data. It includes symbol mapping across many identifiers, including tickers, QSIP, CEDO, and ISIN. OneTick Cloud also has query tools covering a wide spectrum of uses from simple extractions to highly customized analytical results across names, markets, and history. You can also take advantage of OneTick's client APIs to stream content directly to your own application. Visit our website at onetick.com for the latest news, read a white paper, or view additional webinars. Thank you.